Two more movies remain in my marathon reviews. Let's get these over with, and then Endgame Review will be coming out soon after the movie comes out. So, roll the intro. Avengers Endgame was actually, once again, directed by the Russo brothers. They directed Civil War and other Marvel movies. And Infinity War was a big, big, big box office hit. <laughs> actually, to be quite serious, guys, this movie was actually really good. It actually met our expectations. We, I was actually thinking to myself, the year that this was coming out, I actually thought to myself, if this movie actually isn't as good as what the trailers are making out to be, with all these heroes brought together, all the movies, all the Marvel movies have been building up to this, and if it's not good, that would be the biggest letdown in Marvel movie history. And did the movie let us down? No, of course not. This movie absolutely uh, delivered. Now, let me get some of the flaws I have out of the way. That way I can talk about a lot of the positives. Uh, I feel like with all these characters, they did balance them extremely well. I was surprised. There were so many characters for so many different movies, and they balanced them excellently. But that being said, some characters do things that are a little bit out of character. The reason why they don't succeed in beating Thanos is because, you know, Star-Lord hits him in the face with his gun. And he just can't lose, it. he just can't hold it back. And I feel like that would have been more something that Drax would have done. I understand that Star-Lord lost his girlfriend and all, but I felt like something like that would have been what Drax would have done. So it felt a little bit out of character. Also, I will say that Captain America doesn't have a ton of screen time. And I would have liked to see a little bit more of Cap, but that's just a minor nitpick. Um, I also gotta say, um, a lot of the characters seem a little bit underpowered in this movie. Like, the Hulk seems extremely... Like, the Hulk wasn't even able to do anything while Iron Man is able to do something against Thanos. And Iron Man had a tough time against the Hulk. Like, stuff like that just kind of irritated me. And the most disappointing thing about this movie, in my opinion, is the fact that Hulk is not there. And he's a chicken. It's like he doesn't want to come on out and he doesn't want to fight Thanos because he got his butt kicked once. Come on, man. That being said, all these characters that are being balanced out, they balance them out well. Let's just leave it at that. They balance out these characters very well. Um, the action scenes are gorgeous. Um, some of the green screen looks a little bit awkward at some points. Um, on Titan, I noticed that with some of Iron Man's scenes, where he's, like, standing there and you see some of the stuff behind him. Like, it looked a little bit off there, but... That being said, they actually did do a lot of great special effects. Thanos looks like a real-life living creature. He looked real. That was our biggest concern about this movie, is that it was just going to be like this big, fake-looking CG character like in Justice League. And they didn't give us that. The CG character in this movie looks real. And I love that. All these characters coming together, one movie that just did not disappoint us. And I love this movie. Couple of issues, but that's not a problem. Avengers Infinity War is an easy, great film. Or is easily a great film. Now, to get into the one that my buddies and I negotiate, or try to negotiate with each other all the time, Ant-Man and the Wasp. This movie, I feel like... I, 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 it's just something's off about it. Let me get all my issues out of the way first. The fact that they try to make... Scott Lang, the Ant-Man, looked like an idiot and looked like he's completely useless at times to make the Wasp look better. Like, I understand Ant-Man got his own film and all, but 
They just kind of like nerf him in this movie. They make him an oblivious idiot who gets them in trouble all the time. And that just bothers me. Also, the whole Janet storyline, like, how did she survive down there? Is there a whole civil like, like, you know what? During an interview, the directors of this movie said that they would actually answer some of these questions. Like, what was life like down there where Janet was and how'd she survive and what time of stop? They only gave us one statement in the movie. It's all about evolution. Dumb. And also, I gotta say, this movie is not visually as good as the first Ant-Man. Like, the first Ant-Man did have colors, and this has colors too, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't as impressive as the first Ant-Man. And the action scenes seem really, really bland. <laughs> really bland. And the humor, though good, at times it just doesn't sit with me. At times. But that being said, this is still a fun Marvel film. It tries to have a lot of fun. Um, but I guess the biggest problem I have with it is just that it does feel like filler. Like, it feels like Infinity War was like the steak dinner, and this is just like the little tiny burger you get from McDonald's. Like, that's what it kind of felt like. I, I, I don't like this film as much as other people do, and... I don't know. Ant-Man and the Wasp, I'd say, is a decent film. But definitely, Ant-Man and the Wasp is better than Captain Marvel. Because I said in my Captain Marvel review, I said it was better than Ant-Man and the Wasp. I completely take that back. Ant-Man and the Wasp is easily better than <laughs> Captain Marvel. That being said, this is the end of our marathon reviews. Because the end is near, and don't forget to subscribe today to join the Exilization. Mm -hmm.